Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Magic News with Magic Ridge. I'm your host, Ridge. Nice to meet you. And today, before we get into the rest of the Strixhaven spoilers for March 31st, I want to ask you a question. Do you like free stuff? What about free Magic the Gathering booster packs? What about free Magic the Gathering booster packs delivered directly to your door for free? Well, if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then I have something for you. So, I have a current giveaway going on right now as we speak. This giveaway does not end until April 13th at 12 midnight Eastern Time. Now, all you have to do to enter this giveaway, three simple, easy steps. Step one, subscribe to Magic Ridge YouTube channel. Very easy. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. All you have to do is click on that link, leave a thumbs up, leave a like on that video, and leave a comment on that video. Three easy steps right there. 30 seconds, you'll be done. And you're entered to win not one, not two, but three chances to win. Free booster packs delivered directly to your door anywhere in the world. Wow. Right? That's what I thought. So, yeah. Get into it. I hope you win. Uh, I'm rooting for you. And, yeah, hopefully the RNG God is on your side. So, yeah. Uh, any questions about it, they'll be in that description of the video that has the giveaway. If you have any questions, it's all in the description. So, yeah. Other than that, we're going to get right into the March 31st uh, spoilers. I've already done a part one. I've done the, some stuff this morning. It's a little later in the day. They've stopped spoiling stuff, so let's get into it. First up, we have Quandrix Pledge Mage. One man of any color and a, any combination of Forest Island, Forest Island, 3cc, creature type Merfolk Druid, 2-2. This creature has Magecraft, so whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Quandrix Pledge Mage. Cool common. Next up, we have multiple choice. So, X mana of any color and an island, unknown CC. Sorcery speed. If X is one, you can scry one, then draw a card. If X is two, you may choose a player. They return a creature they control to its owner's hand. If X is 3, create a 4-4 four, four blue and red elemental creature token. If X is 4 or more, do all the above. Uh, not bad, not great. It's cool. Next up, we have Archway Commons. This is a land. It comes into the battlefield tapped. When Archway Commons enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless you pay 1 mana of any color. You can tap this land to add 1 mana of any color. I think this is a very cool um, land that is very cheap, and it's very good for multiple color decks. Like I said, it's a great alternative to expensive lands. Next up, we have arguably one of the better cards that have been spoiled the, so far. So, I believe this is a Drake. Uh, I'm not sure what the name is. It's not in English. So, anyway, the card... CC is one forest, one island, so two CC is a 1-1 one, one flying death touch. Now you might be like, well, why is that great? Well, I don't know if you've ever heard about Baleful Strix, but Baleful Strix used to be an expensive card. It might be down lower in price now, but at one point it was like a 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 dollar card, okay? And this is basically the card. It's a 2 CC, 1-1 one, one flying death touch. Um, and But instead of the colors that it was in for Baleful Strix, this is in the Simic colors. So, yeah, kind of cool. Uh, something to look out for. Something to something to check into. This may be one of the more expensive commons. Uh, this might be a dollar common. I'm not entirely sure. Next up, we have Reflecting Golem. I assume it's a golem for its creature type. We don't know. It's not in English. Uh, and it is a 2-3, so it has a little extra booty. So whenever you cast an incident or sorcery spell that targets, I assume, this golem, since it's reflecting golem, you may pay two additional mana to copy it. If you do, you may choose new targets for the copy. So that's kind of cool. Um, I don't really know. 
I mean, the artwork's pretty decent. I don't know where that's going to go. Next up, we have Ether Helix. Three mana of any color and a Forest Island 5cc sorcery speed. Return target permanent to its owner's hand. Then you can return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So that's pretty decent. It's kind of high on the CC, high on the mana cost, but still pretty good. Next up, we have Leonin Light Scribe. One mana of any color and a Plains 2cc creature type clat, clat, <laughs> cat, cleric. 2-2. Two, two. This cat has Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy... Coffee. Coffee. I need some coffee. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Uh, yeah. It is what it is. Next up, we have Fervent Mastery. Three mana of any color and Mountain Mountain. 5cc sorcery speed. You may pay four mana rather than pay the spell's mana cost. Okay, so one one last. If you pay f if the four mana cost was paid, an opponent discards any number of cards and then draws that many cards. You can search your library for up to three cards, put them into your hand, then shuffle, then discard three cards at random. So it is a red tutor for three cards, but you have to discard three cards at random. So yeah, I don't know how I feel about this card. This card could be good. This card could be good. Uh, when I first read it, yeah, read it. When I first read it, when I first read this card, I had no idea that I just read that it tutors for three cards. But then again, like I said, you discard three. And if you don't pay the five and pay the four, your opponents can discard any number of cards and draw cards. So, yeah, I mean, this card is something to look at, too. I just don't know what it's going to do. I have no guesses. Um... I assume it'll be good in some sort of format, though. Maybe modern. I don't know. Next up, we have Eureka Moment. Two mana of any color and a Forest Island. 4cc instant speed. Draw two cards. You may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Not bad. Um, yeah, pretty decent for that mana cost. Could be one less. Next up, we have Accomplished Alchemist. Three mana of any color and a Forest. 4cc creature type Elf Druid. It is a 2-5. It has an excessive amount of booty. You can tap this elf druid to add one mana of any color to your mana pool, or you can tap it to add X mana of any one color, where X is the amount of life you gain this turn. So yeah, that could be useful in certain decks. I could see. Yeah, pretty cool. Next up, we have Emergent Sequence. For one mana of any color and a forest 2cc sorcery speed, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. That land becomes a 0-0 zero, zero green and blue fractal creature that's still a land. Put a plus one plus one counter on it for each land you had enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Um, that's pretty cool. I mean, what's it going to be tops? Like a 2-2, two, 3-3, two, three, three, maybe... Two two three three, and then your land's vulnerable to removal. So yeah, all things to consider. Next up, we have Augmenter Pugilist, something like that. One man of any color and forest forest three CC creature type troll druid three three trample. As long as you control eight or more lands, Augmenter Pugilist enters the battle. Gets plus five plus five rather. No counters, just gets it. So, it is an 8-8 eight, eight for 3 mana. As long as you have 8 or more lands, that's pretty insane. Um, yeah, even for green, that's pretty big. And it's an MDMFC. So, the other side is Echoing Equation. So, for 3 mana of any color and Island Island, 5cc sorcery speed. Choose target creature you control. Each other creature you control becomes a copy of it until end of turn. Except those creatures aren't legendary if the chosen creature is legendary. So this is another card that is pretty insane. It's something to keep an eye on. See what happens with it. I mean, anything could happen, honestly. Um, that's pretty insane. Uh, next up, we're going to go over cards that we've already spoiled, but these are going to be extended arts, etc. So, first up, we're not even, we might talk about some of them. 
Others we may not. So multiple choice, I feel like I've gone over it seven times. So multiple choice, X man of any color in an island, we're not going to go over it. We're going to look at it. Here you go. We've, we, are, we just went over it already in this one. Uh, next up, we have Teachings of the Archaics. So three mana, uh, three CC, two mana of any color in an island, three CC. Sorcery Lesson. If an opponent has more cards in hand than you, draw two cards. Draw three cards instead if an opponent has at least four more cards in hand than you. This is pretty decent. Extended Art. Next up, we have Baleful Mastery. Three mana of any color and a Swamp. Four CC, Instant Speed, Extended Art. You may pay two mana rather than the spell's mana cost. If you paid two, an opponent draws a card. Uh, you get to Exile, Target Creature, or Planeswalker. Pretty good. Uh, I would never let my opponent draw a card, but that's just me. Next up, we have Verdant Mastery, 5 mana of any color, and a Forest, 5 CC, Sorcery Speed, Extended Art. You may pay 4 mana, then pay this spell's mana cost. Search your library for up to 4 basic land cards and reveal them. Put one of them on the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control if you paid the 4 mana rather than the 6. Uh, put 2 of them on the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into your hand, then shuffle. So yeah, pretty cool. I, once again, I would not pay the four. I would pay the five, or the six, rather. Gonna need a drink. All right, next up, we have Blade Historian. Any amount of mountain plains, mountain plains, mountain plains, mountain plains. Four CC, creature type human cleric. Two, three, he has a little extra booty. I do like the artwork on this guy. Uh, attacking creatures you control have double strike. He's actually pretty relevant himself. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Next up, we have Culmination of Studies, x Man of Any Color and Island Mountain, Unknown CC, Extended Art Sorcery. Exile the top X cards of your library. For each land card exiled this way, create a treasure token. For each blue card exiled this way, draw a card. For each red card exiled this way, Culmination of Studies deals one damage to each opponent. This is a pretty decent card. I'm not going to front. It's pretty good. Next up, we have Elemental Expressionist. Any amount of Island, Mountain, Island, Mountain, Island, Mountain, 4cc, Extended Art, Creature Type, Orc, Wizard, 4-4, four, four, Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, choose target creature you control until end of turn. It gains if this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. And when you exile this creature, create a 4-4 four, four, blue and red elemental creature token. Uh, excuse me, I have to take a drink. I am very parched. I don't want to ruin my voice for tomorrow. Next up, we have an expressive iteration for an island mountain 2cc sorcery speed. I forget what they call these, but it's, it's another... It's, it's like... It's not extended art. It's not borderless. Um, I don't know why I didn't write it down once again. But it's another artwork. It's another art of this card. Sorcery Speed. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them into your hand and put one of them on the bottom of your library and exile one of them. You may play the exiled card this turn. Pretty cool. Next up, we have another MDMFC. We have Wandering Archaic. Archaic. Five mana of any color. Five CC. Creature type Avatar. Four, four. Whenever an opponent casts an instant or sorcery spell, they may pay two additional mana. If they don't, you may copy that spell. You may choose new targets for that copy. Pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. The other side of it is called Explore the Vast Lands. Three mana of any color, three CC, sorcery speed. Once again, this guy is an extended art. Each player looks at the top five cards of their library, reveals a land and or instant or sorcery card from among them, then puts the cards they revealed this way into their hand and the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order, and each player gains three life. So this is kind of like a hug card on the reverse side. Next up, we have Cody Vorciferous Codex. Three mana of any color, three CC, legendary artifact creature construct. It is a 1-4. It is nothing but the booty for the most part. You can't cast permanent spells. 
Ouch. This card is very interesting. I would watch and see what people do with this as well. Uh, you can pay four mana and tap this card to add Wooberg to your mana pool. So one color of every mana to your mana pool. When you cast your next spell this turn, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile an instant or sorcery card with lesser mana value. Until end of turn, you may cast that card without paying its mana cost. Put each other card exiled this way on the bottom of your library in a random order. I was hoping to make a construct themed deck, but it looks like we've got whatever this is. Now, this, this card, there might be some ridiculous decks built around this in EDH. I'm expecting this to be a powerhouse. I really am. But, uh, yeah, it's got some downsides. You can't cast permanent spells. So, yeah. Next up, we have another extended art. We have Strixhaven Stadium. Three mana of any color, three CC artifact. You can tap it to add a colorless mana to your mana pool. Put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, you get to remove a point counter from Strixhaven Stadium. And then when a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Then if it has 10 or more point counters on it, remove them all and that player loses the game. So I guess the player that you did combat damage to that put the point counters on the stadium is the one that loses the game. Uh, it should be worded a little different because what if you tap it to add the final counter, right? You add the the tenth counter to to it by adding a colorless man to your mana pool. Then if you remove those, who loses the game? Nobody. I don't know. Do you have to deal combat damage to a player to have them lose the game? I don't know. Questions that I don't have answers for at this moment. Next up, we have Hall of Oracles. Extended art. Love the art on this. Land. You can tap to add a colorless mana to your mana pool. You can tap a mana of any color and tap this to add one mana of any color to your mana pool. You can also tap it to put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Activate only as a sorcery and only if you cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn. Yeah, it is what it is. Next up, probably my most favorite card from this set, spoiled so far, we have Exitus Auric Overlord. One mana of any color and plain Swamp Swamp 4cc Legendary Creature Human Warlock. It is a 2-4. He has a little extra booty. He also has Double Strike and Magecraft. So whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell... Return target non-legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Pretty cool. The other side of the MDFC has Awaken the Blood Avatar. Six mana of any color and a um, Swamp Mountain. 8cc sorcery speed. As an additional cost to cast this spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs two generic less to cast for each creature sacrifice this way. So, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Create a 3-6 black and red avatar creature token with haste. And whenever this creature attacks, it deals 3 damage to each opponent. Very cool. The artwork is very cool. It is all very, very cool. I definitely want one of these. Next up, and possibly the last spoiler, thank goodness, we have Leonin Light Scribe. One man of any color and a Plains 2cc creature type cat cleric 2-2. Magecraft, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. This is an extended art. So good luck to those who have entered the giveaway. Uh, and, you know, if you're watching this before April 13th, feel free to join the giveaway. Um, yeah. And if you're curious, every single major set release, I do a giveaway. Quite like this. It may not be three winners, it may be one, it may be bigger prizes. You never know. Depends on what's going on that month, what I have to offer. So, yeah. Um, good luck, and I'll see y'all tomorrow for... April 1st, spoilers. Peace.